Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks. With the Spain News Update, we'll have a look at some of the main stories that have caught my attention in the press here in Spain. And we'll also take a look at some comments that have been left on the channel in recent times. Firstly, a big thanks to all of the people that have supported the channel in recent times, whether it's by buying me a coffee through the Super Thanks option on YouTube, longer term supporters on Patreon, or people that have become a member of this channel in recent times. Many Many thanks for that support. It's greatly appreciated. Now, straight into the news, and the Spanish government has been taking a lot of interesting decisions recently. The other day, it announced that it's going to set up a 20 billion euro state technology company, which will most likely be run by civil servants and former politicians. And yesterday, it announced that it's going to invest in companies with money borrowed from the European Union. As we can see here, the government will allocate 8.7 billion euros of EU loans to take equity in companies. The government will allocate 8.75 billion euros from the loans of the recovery plan, which totals 83 billion euros, to invest in companies alongside venture capital fund managers. The goal is to make a profit when the funds are sold off so that the money can be repaid to Brussels. Sources from the Official Credit Institute explained yesterday that this agency is the sole participant in four funds managed by Axis, its venture capital subsidiary. These funds will invest in other venture capital funds where they will hold a maximum stake of 49% or participate in financing rounds without exceeding that percentage of capital and where they will coexist with other investors. The venture capital funds will focus on their activity, that is, entering into the capital of companies and participating in their management to make them more profitable with the aim of selling their stake after a few years and making a profit. When this happens, the ICO as a participant will receive its corresponding share. So there we go, an interesting idea announced yesterday by the Spanish government, take money borrowed from the European Union, part of these European recovery loans, and use that money to take equity in companies. Then try to make those companies more profitable, and if they are profitable, then sell that stake and then repay the loans to the European Union. Don't know about you, but to me it sounds like a good idea. What could go wrong? And what does the average Spaniard think about this idea, or at least people that have left comments on this article in the newspaper? Well, comment number two, public organizations are terrible businessmen, especially if governments are among them. This has been known for more than 100 years, but the error is insisted on. And comment number one, in other words, the government is going to dedicate itself to speculating in listed and unlisted companies with money that they are going to lend, they are going to lend to us, from the EU? It's all a joke, right? Well, commenter number one, I don't think it's a joke. But let me know what you guys think about this idea in the comment section below. Good idea or bad idea? Now, another piece of news, this time related to the environment here in Spain, and especially pollution in Spanish cities. And apparently, none of Spain's major cities currently complies with new European pollution limits. European institutions agreed last week to tighten air concentration limits for the main pollutants. In several cases, this means halving the maximums with respect to what has been allowed up to now. The countries of the European Union will have to catch up in the next six years because compliance will be mandatory as of 2030, and in view of the current data, Spain will be no exception. In fact, none of the country's 20 most populated cities currently complies with the new annual limits for the two Two main pollutants, nitrogen dioxide and PM 2.5 particles, those with a diameter of less than 2.5 microns, which are behind tens of thousands of premature deaths a year in Spain. So an interesting headline and an eye-opener for people that live in one of those 20 cities here in Spain that don't currently comply with those European Union pollution levels. And it's going to be interesting to see the ideas that town halls in those cities come up with to comply with those new limits. And a big thanks to regular viewer Jen for sending me that article. Now the next piece of news, and an interesting piece of news as far as the property market here in Spain is concerned, and it is that foreign buyers in Spain have declined by 7% in 2023. The land registrars of Spain have published fourth quarter figures that provide a picture of the full year when combined with their other quarterly reports in 2023. 
pending confirmation in their annual report, the figures show that 87,365 property sales involved a foreign buyer in 2023, down 7% on the previous year and the second best year on record. By nationality, the British were the biggest market as usual, with 8,326 acquisitions in the year, followed by the Germans and the French. All three markets declined compared to the previous year, with the Germans down the most, 24%, followed by the British, 15% down, and the French, 5% down. The biggest growth in demand came from the USA, up 154%, followed by Italy, up 11%, which includes Argentine buyers with Italian passports. So there we go, foreign property sales in Spain in 2023 still dominated by the British, the Germans and the French. But watch out because the Americans are coming, up 154% on previous figures. I wonder what's behind this. If you've got any idea, please let us know in the comment section. And the final piece of news we'll look at today, and it's an important piece of news for people that have property on the Costa del Sol or people that are planning a holiday on the Costa del Sol this year. Because because as we can see from the headline, swimming pool confusion on the Costa amid ongoing drought crisis. Will they be in use this summer? Communities of homeowners on the Costa del Sol are facing a regulatory nightmare when it comes to the opening of their swimming pools amid the drought crisis in the south of Spain, claiming regulations are still unclear, with Easter week just around the corner at the end of March, which often marks the opening of community swimming pools on the coast, Malaga province property administrators have pointed out they they still don't definitely know whether they can refill them or open the pools up for access. The problem lies with the Junta de Andalusia's drought decree and the town council's restrictions on water usage, which contradict each other, according to the president of the Malaga Association of Property Administrators, Manuel Jiménez. Caro. So there we go. Will people living in that part of Spain or visiting that part of Spain in coming months be able to use the pool? We still don't know. And why is this? Well, as we saw there, governments in that part of Spain are contradicting each other. And unfortunately, there's nothing unusual about that happens all the time. Now let's have a look at some comments that have been left on videos recently. One here from Rubbery, I have been watching on TV news and visual reports about major disruptions on roads by farmers on tractors in Madrid and Barcelona protesting about cheap imports and farmers restrictions regarding air pollution from farms and the net zero date to stop all CO2. Farmers will be going out of business apparently. The same has happened in Ireland, the Netherlands, France, Germany, including the EU offices in Brussels and others including Spain. No farming, no food they are saying. Yeah, Rubbery, thanks for the comment, and you're right, farmers here in Spain have been protesting with their tractors for about a month now. Apparently, as you point out there, they're not happy with some of the rules and regulations that the European Union wants to put in place by 2030 and have taken to the streets in protest all over the country. Big cities, small cities, just about everywhere, farmers and their tractors have been creating disturbances. But as you also point out in your comment, this issue is not unique to Spain. It's happened in other European countries too. And the main slogan of these protests is no farmers, no food. One here from Milan, Stu, don't forget zinc. It's the most important mineral when you are sick. Go with 100 milligrams a day during the entire period, then you can drop down to 50 milligrams. It is the ammunition the body uses to kill invading virions. Yeah, Melange, thanks for the comment and thanks for the zinc tip. And a big thanks to everyone else who has also sent me tips on how to get over this nasty virus that I have had for the last six or seven days. So I'll head down to the chemist when I finish this video and get my hands on some of that zinc. One here from Paul Gerard. Good video. You're right, Stu. These types of scandal have been repeating over the years with EU funds. Back in 2014, there was an investigation where the Spanish police investigated the embezzlement of £1.5 billion of EU funds that were bound for retraining schemes for the unemployed. This month, however, the EU pandemic fund inspectors found no sign of fraud in Spain, but did suggest Spain should be more flexible and transparent in the use of its funds and in providing public information about them. They also added, nothing new there, several of Spain's regions complain about their proposals not being considered. 
Yeah, Paul, thanks for the comment. And this is something that we spoke about in yesterday's live stream. The amount of corruption scandals that have happened here in Spain in the time that I've been living here over the last 25 years or so, and uh, many of them involving EU funds. The one that you mentioned there, the biggest corruption scandal here in Spain, I believe, that involves EU funds, the fraudulent training scheme that took place in Andalusia, which of course at the time was controlled by the Socialist Party. A huge amount of money was misused, and this current corruption scandal that the PSOE is also involved in allegedly pales in comparison. And as was pointed out in the article that we saw yesterday, every time there is a corruption scandal here in Spain involving EU money, it damages Spain's chances of, in the future, getting more money. Or at least it should. One here from Ralph, smoke detectors required in Ontario, Canada. Yeah, Ralph, thanks for the comment. And this was another topic that we touched on briefly in yesterday's live stream, whether or not smoke detectors are compulsory here in Spain in residential apartments. Somebody in a comment yesterday pointed pointed out that where they are from in the United States, I think it was, smoke detectors have been compulsory for years. And you also pointing out that where you're from, they're compulsory too. To be honest, not sure what the regulation is here in Spain, but all I know is that where I live, there's no smoke detectors. So when I'm finished buying my zinc at the pharmacy, I might head to the local hardware store and pick myself up a smoke detector. Probably a good idea. One here from Kim, what's the difference between Don and Senor? Yeah, Kim, Thanks for the comment and an interesting question posed there. And I'm sure that people learning Spanish will find the answer very interesting indeed. When talking to somebody, when do you use Don or when do you use Senor? Well, luckily somebody replied to this comment and the answer is fairly simple. Let's have a look. Anthony replied, Don is used just before the given name, Senor before the surname of the full name, in which case it can be used before Don. For example, someone named Jose Garcia Martinez can formally be be addressed as Senor Don Jose Garcia Martinez, Senor Jose Garcia, or Don Jose. So thanks, Antoni, for that reply, and thanks for clearing up those doubts when it comes to the usage of the terms Don and Senor in Spanish. And the final comment here from Brandy, follow the signatures and the money. Yeah, Brandy, thanks for the comment, and you're right, if you want to get to the bottom of a corruption scandal, follow the signatures and the money. Sounds easy, right? And it normally is. There should be a paperwork trail, but unfortunately, sometimes the paperwork gets put through the shredder as people scramble to cover their tracks so that they don't get caught up in these corruption scandals. And as we saw in a previous comment, sometimes here in Spain, politicians and bureaucrats are not all that transparent when it comes to letting people know how money is being spent. Because the idea, I imagine, is to keep the average citizen in the dark for as long as possible. But hey, that's just my opinion. On that note, I'm going to wrap the video up. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. If if you have anything to add to the conversation today, the comment section is the place for you. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. I'll see you in the next one. Hasta luego.